Welcome to ESP TV. I am Patricia Streeter, aka Always a Lady, and I'm back, y'all. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Okay, so as y'all know, I bring y'all the good news. I bring y'all the international news. I need to bring y'all the local news. I bring y'all whatever it is we think that will be entertaining. Um, Anything that we think that you guys should know, we are just digging to bring you the best news for the everyday people. So we are going to get straight into it. Well, no, let's hold on. Let's wait a minute. Let's talk about what I did over the weekend. Um, so actually, I, what did I do? Vision board party. So right here in the Virginia Beach area, which is our 757, um, the format in PDF, which I am the PM PDF, is another platform. It's a podcast that I do with two other uh, creative people in this area, Dutch Rick Lamar and Femi Gordon. Um, we do a podcast called The Format in PDF, and we just do it to entertain people. Uh, we like talking things that is fashion, beauty, lifestyle. Um, we're very funny. We're very entertaining. So it is definitely um, something you guys want to get into. But what we decided to do this past weekend was do a vision board party. Most people like to do their vision board parties in January, and hey, hats off to whoever wants to do how they want to do it. But we decided we wanted to do it before Christmas, and we wanted to keep it intimate and small, and that's exactly what we did. So this past Saturday, we did a vision board party called I Can See Clearly Now, a vision board party 2020. And we wanted to focus on individuals that just don't really have a support system that follows our format and PDF, individuals that do have support system but feel like they're not the focus of their support system and we had a nice turnout we wanted to keep it intimate small so that we can talk with each other shake hands laugh cry whatever we wanted to do and we actually had some guys attend which is kind of unusual a lot of people say i don't know what it's on my face oh my god y'all so we had two guys there which one was dutch and another one was marky the model so he came out and everybody was very involved they were very hands-on we really worked the room and touched everybody everybody knew knew each other's name and that was what we really wanted to do so I say all of that to say, if you have a, a group of people and y'all don't know kind of what to do to get yourself motivated for the new year, a lot of people do New Year's resolutions, which is really, really old. You want to find a way to keep yourself motivated to where it makes sense and something you can look forward to, do a vision board party. Um, if you don't know what to do for New Year's Eve, get your friends together, get some food, get some um, drinks, and do a vision board party. Talk about what it is that you want to do in the new year. And it's not, vision board parties are not always about people that do business or people that are in business. It's, it's about everyday life. It's basically about um, you want to do better in the life that you're in. So I did the vision board party with PDF. It turned out to be amazing. So I encourage you guys to do that. And then actually locally, uh, Bally Fusion Dance Company did their uh, Christmas play now at the MOCA, which is the Virginia Museum Art of uh, Contemporary Art Museum. And they have a creative art where they work with disabled children. They work with young, up-and-coming um, artists, emerging creative. Their creative center really uh, works in the community with the children. They are a very good uh, dance studio, art creative studio that works um, well with children and people with disabilities. So y'all go Google that. Battle Fusion Dance Company, they're doing great things in the community. And yes, ESP TV was in the building to get a little bit of what they have going on. So make sure y'all uh, see those clips that we have. So that's what I did over the weekend, you guys. So basically, let's get into it. Let's talk about, uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh, Aldi's. Okay, so the grocery store. Aldi's is a grocery store that started um, more on the East Coast, uh, not East Coast, Lord Jesus, it's just been a day, more in the Midwest. They are a Midwest food chain that started years ago. As you know, I'm from Chicago, and my parents used to shop at Aldi's when I was young. So Aldi's was a, a shop in a bag your own groceries kind of grocery store. It was uh, really to save money. Uh, they had lower uh, items in their grocery store that people could afford that was in lower income house lower income communities and that's where they were kind of located so Aldi's was one of the grocery stores that I grew up in and now being here in Virginia they've migrated over into the east coast and they're kind of making their way around so basically Aldi's is new to this area but I've been known about it for years and what they're doing is they have decided that they are going to give away all of their leftover fruits and vegetables and unsold fresh foods to less fortunate individuals 
schools and um, organizations. So listen here, y'all. Locally, here in the 757, I don't know exactly how many we have, but I know I can count five that's um, on this side and the peninsula, south side and the peninsula. So if you are an organization and you are doing anything on Christmas or you're doing anything um like right after Christmas for families, definitely reach out to your local Aldi's. They're giving away all their unsold fresh foods to local organizations and um, less fortunate individuals. So if you are a family and you feel like you can um, use some of that, definitely they're going to be closing their doors at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And once they close the doors, they'll be handing out all the unsold fresh food. So I think this is great. I think this is amazing. I think this is a great idea. Um, they basically want to kind of help the community and they don't want to just throw the food away, which we have this conversation all the time. There's so many businesses and so many restaurants um, that just have all this leftover food and they throw it away. For instance, my daughter works for a big hotel chain and after they finish their food for their breakfast bar, they throw it away. I'm talking bacon, eggs, bagels, like it's crazy. Like you're throwing all this food away and it's like homeless people out there. It's people of less fortune. So I just apply all these for just making this, this, this thing happen. Like, come on. So basically at 4 PM on Christmas Eve, they're going to give away all their unsold fresh food. So definitely, definitely, definitely. If you know an organization that works with giving family food baskets or, you know, any families that's going to be less fortunate that can really use this like comment and share this video, share, share, share it, tag an organization, let them know, Hey, it's some good pointers that we are giving here on ESP TV and we want to help you whoever we can with the information that we bring so y'all shout out to all these and make sure that um you share this with somebody that can use the information i think it's a great thing and um i definitely just wanted to bring that story to you guys locally so that y'all can know that there are these bigger food chains that are that's not just like hey we ain't gonna use it we're gonna throw it away it is still good people in the world so moving on moving on we're gonna move on to a little bit of entertainment and we're gonna talk Beyonce. Um, I'm a Beyonce fan. I love Beyonce, but I'm not a Beyonce super fan. Um, you know the difference. You have the ones that go straight Beyonce crazy, and then you have the ones that's, you know, like, I like Beyonce. I like her music. Some things I like, some things I don't. Um, so it has been being rumored or said that Beyonce was going to start a residency. How you say it? Say it. Residency, residence, whatever. You know what they do in Vegas. It's a residence. Um, and she was going to be doing a show in Vegas, which we know some of the, the greats have been there. Uh, J-Lo, uh, Pink. Um, God, what's her name? The white lady with the, the Caucasian lady um, that did the Titanic song. Her, um, I'll get her name in a minute. So getting a residence in Las Vegas is a big deal. Honestly, personally, I don't feel she needs it. Beyonce is amazing and extraordinary by herself. Like, her concert sells out with tickets of hundreds of dollars. So, I don't think she needs to do Vegas to uh, solidify who she is or what it is she's going to do. But the rumors that she'll be hitting a strip uh, beginning um, 2020 um, is said to be a lie. Beyonce is, uh, they said she was going to be one of the highest paid entrepreneurs in the city. So far, her camp is saying, no, that's not going to be, you know, the fact that she's not going to be doing a residency. And the reason I wanted to bring this story, because I'm trying to figure out, like, why are they making a big, why are they making a big deal about her having a residency there when Beyonce is already a big deal in her own life? If Beyonce was to do a residency in Vegas, would you actually go see her? Yeah, I think she, I think you would. Do you think she will like blow the top off of what has already been done in Vegas? Like, I just, I'm kind of intrigued to why they're, they're thinking Beyonce is going to do a residency in Vegas. So this story kind of is intriguing me. So I kind of wanted to bring this because I know it's trending. I know people are talking about it, but what are we really talking about though? What, what, what is the story really about? Either she is or she ain't. Is she going to bring something special to Vegas? Is she not going to bring something special to Vegas? What is Beyonce going to do in Vegas that she hasn't already done? So I, I want to know if the rumor started for a reason. So, y'all, let's get into this. Let's dig into this a little bit more. I really would like to know what was the big deal about saying Beyonce was coming to Vegas because at the end of the day, all Beyonce got to do is put out a, what does she usually do? Put out, like, a three song on and, like, it goes viral. She sells out. Like, what is Vegas going to do for her? What was the point of it? So, y'all, let's keep into this. I'm going to bring more details because right now, they're basically just saying it's a rumor. She was going to do it. She wasn't going to do it. And that's it. So, 
what is the story really about? We're like, what are they setting us up for? So I wanted to bring that just for that alone. So you guys stay tuned for more Beyonce news. So speaking of black girl magic, let's talk about um, Miss World. Uh, Miss Jamaica emerges as the 69th Miss World. That's amazing, right? Like, that is super dope amazing. So, five right now, five uh, African-American females hold the titles to different, um, you got Miss America, you got Miss USA, you got Miss World, and I'm going to find the other one. So, y'all hold on, hold on tight. Miss Universe. Miss Universe, and what's another one? Anyhow, let's just keep going. So the fact that we have five African-American females that holds titles in this beauty industry, that is 100% amazing. I think it is something great. And it's really not about them being of color, but it really is because at the end of the day, you know, they're just making a big deal that is five African-Americans that hold five titles and those things that we were really not supposed to be a part of. Um, I personally don't like to get into like the whole race thing because... It is what it is. But at the end of the day, for our culture, it is something amazing because even though people love our melanin, they love our black skin, they don't like to see us hold titles that they feel should be for other people of different races, if I'll put it that way. Um, because we are beautiful. Our skin is amazing. We're smart. We're intelligent. And for us to hold all five titles right now at the same time, we're just going to say hats off. Congratulations to each and every one of you ladies. Congratulations on all your hard work because at the end of the day, sometimes we have to work, not sometimes, the end of the day, we have to work five times as harder to get just the, the same things that sometimes people don't have to work hard to get at all. So it is amazing. So I just want to give a little facts on Miss Jamaica. She's a 23-year-old. Um, she was announced at the Miss World 2019 on December 14, 2019. So y'all keep that date in mind. That's a date of greatness. Um, and Miss Nigeria was on hand to cheer. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Oh. So even though she is the 69th Miss World, they're more talking about how the other women, which is one of them, Miss Nigeria, reaction to her winning was overwhelming to people they was like oh my god she's really cheering her on oh my god she's really happy for her what else should she be should she be sappy should she she be petty should she be mad definitely 100 percent the reason i love us because we are genuine people not saying everybody else ain't genuine but the fact that her reaction was probably just as overwhelming as if it was her is amazing like we are in a world where we need to do more cheering for others than worry about competition or who won or who didn't. The fact is they both was on one of the biggest stages. They both was in a competition that they both worked very hard for. So at the end of the day, somebody got to lose, somebody got to win. And if you don't win, you cheer on the ones that do because there's always a next time or there's always something setting you up for a greater platform. So we just applaud Miss Nigeria for giving us that reaction and making of the women see not even women of color women of all ethnicities all diversities that it's okay to clap for another woman it's okay to clap for somebody else's um wins and somebody else's um goals that they're meeting it is always a great thing to cheer other people on so you guys go check that story out i'm actually on legit this is a new platform that i found and i actually like it they bring a lot of the latest news that's kind of you know in a different way so i like it besides esp tv Hmm. Um, so basically, y'all go check that out on Legit, um, and y'all just check out the story, and they have comments that you can leave there. Leave a comment. I left a comment, and I think it's a great thing that women cheering women on. For one, congratulations to everybody that was in the competition. You guys did a great job, but somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, so let's just clap it up for the person that won, and we are really, really, really thankful to have you, um, represent Miss World, that platform. I gotta do more research on Miss World. I think it's a great thing because my daughter is into pageants, so I'm looking forward to her reaching those uh, those high standards too. So y'all let us know how y'all feel about that story. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, and share this video. Anything that y'all want to uh, add to what I've, I've already put out there, definitely leave it down there. We want to have a conversation with you guys. We want to go back and forth. We want to know how y'all feel about the news that we're bringing, the information that we're bringing, and how we're bringing it to you because here we are are striving for our uh, black excellence. 
all type of excellence. So y'all stay tuned. ESP TV is bringing y'all a lot of different um, personalities. We are really gearing up to bring you guys from entertainment to news to sports to fashion to in. I mean, all that good stuff. So y'all stay tuned. We just want to thank you guys so far for so just supporting us and sharing, liking, and comment what we got going on. So y'all continue to do exactly what y'all doing. Y'all celebrate us. Um, I want to get into a little bit of sports. I usually don't cover sports because I don't know a lot about sports, but I thought that this article, I thought that this news was very interesting, and I thought that it would be something that you guys would be like, hmm. I don't see it trending big on the internet. I don't know why. I don't see a lot of people talking about it. I don't know why, but we're going to talk about it right here, right now. So on CNN, one of the biggest news uh, platforms there is out there, and I'm going to read it from right here from my phone. It says, MLB will remove marijuana from a list of drug of abuse and test for opiates under new drug agreement. Whoa. Whoa. That's all I can say. Like, when I read it, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Um... And I wonder why. So as I read the article, um, they decided. So as I read the article, I realized the reason that they did that. They said they did it because the changes on opiate testing comes after the death of a 27-year-old Los Angeles angel pitcher, Tyler Skaggs. So if you're an MLB follower, if you follow baseball, then you kind of know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure um, if you're not a baseball follower, you're kind of like, mm, who cares? But think about it. Why would they take marijuana off of the list of drugs of abuse? As we think about it, marijuana is getting, um, being able to be used legally in different states. Is it legal here yet? Anyone know? It's not legal here in Virginia yet. But the fact is, you have one of the biggest sports platforms. Baseballs are one of the highest paid players in sports league, right, um, Ernest? Like, come on now. So if they're going to take it off of the list of drug of abuse, that says a lot. That says a lot. Like, this is not the end. This is, y'all keep up with this. This is this is something. So basically they did that because the autopsy said that this young man actually had, in his system, they found phenyl, oxycodone, oxymorphine, and the death was accident, the autopsy found. So basically it was an accident because he overdosed. He choked on his vomits after... He did these opiates and all these other drugs. So basically they say, marijuana may not kill you, but opiates will. So if marijuana does not kill you, why do we need to test you for it? Now, they did say that they will still treat it as um, you will still have to get if you abusing it and it's affecting your job. They will treat it as if you drank alcohol. That is very interesting to me. One of the... the Baseball has the some of the highest paid players out there. They make money. Do you hear me? If you want you a sports person, you better get you a baseball player. Anyhow, and for them to change this starting with this league, that's big. And I really want y'all to follow this because that says a lot about where they're going to take marijuana. Because if you are letting people that have million-dollar contracts and their body is basically their brand and, and you, they want you to take care of yourself and they're saying... It's okay for you to smoke marijuana. Just don't abuse it. But we're not going to test you for it anymore. We're taking it off the list. We won't test you for marijuana. Like, they don't test you for alcohol. But we will test you for opiates. So they're saying, basically, the opiate epidemic is getting out of control. It is affecting our money. Opiate is affecting their money. And you know um, sports don't play about their money. But marijuana is not. You can function on marijuana. You can, you can do this on marijuana. We haven't really seen that marijuana will... Uh, kill you. So basically, we're going to take it off the list of abuse of drugs. Let's see who's going to follow. Who's going to be next? Basketball, football. This is crazy, you guys. When I read it, I was just like, oh my God. I don't follow baseball too well. I watched it with my granddaddy. Like, I don't follow it. But the fact that they're basically saying it's okay, but it's not okay. It's just like, it's okay to drink, but it's not okay. Don't come to work drunk but you can drink whenever you feel like it. Don't come to work high, but hey, smoke if you want to. We're not going to test your system for it. Um, is this for to be something that now jobs and everybody else is for the follow? Are they for to not test us for marijuana now? Like, I'm very interested to see where this is about to go, um, how they're going to 
just do this whole thing. So you guys follow the story. Y'all go to CNN. Again, that's one of the biggest news platforms out here um, besides what ESP TV is about to be. Um, so y'all stay tuned for that. And y'all go look up that story. They're basically saying in the future, marijuana-related conduct will be treated like alcohol-related conduct and subject to a treatment program that includes mandatory evaluation and voluntary treatment. There's still, there's still the potential of discipline for certain conduct involving marijuana, the league and association said. I'm going to leave it right there. So basically, I just told you they're going to treat it as if, you know, they feel like you're becoming an alcoholic. They're not going to make a big deal out of it, and it's um, going to be taken off the abuse of drugs, drugs of abuse list. Um, that's big. So I definitely wanted to bring you guys that story. Y'all like, comment, and share this. Y'all um, comment under. I really like to know what you think about that. I'd like to know how you feel about that. If you say, hey, it's, it was coming. You know, if you pay attention to what's happening, this is definitely something that was coming next as they legalize more marijuana in different states. And they're uh, putting up these uh, is it, CBD places that's marijuana, but it's not marijuana. I don't know. I don't smoke marijuana. So I don't really keep up with what's happening with it. But I thought that was very interesting because it's against the law as far as I know. So y'all keep up with that. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know how y'all feel about that. So that is just a story that I wanted to bring y'all from the sports uh, perspective because I thought it was very, very interesting. And um, I thought that you should know. So let's go into, um, who? where do I want to start? Um you know, I talked about a little bit about uh, mental health last week and week before last. Every story I bring, um, kind of national story, I kind of um, try to bring you a little bit about mental health because it's really becoming something big in this area. And a lot of people that forget that mental health is important. You want to protect your mental health. You definitely want to keep in touch with what is disturbing your mental health. And you want to be knowledgeable or look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, this is affecting me. This is affecting my mental. This is affecting how I'm thinking, how I'm moving. And you want to be aware of that. So I always try to bring a story that I think will help you um, cope with that in different ways from different perspectives. So this is nothing new to us what I'm about to tell you, but, you know, it's definitely something to just think about. So, M Michelle Williams, which is the third band member of Destiny's Child, said that her, um, it says, Michelle Will Williams admits she was not a favorite in Destiny Child, and it affected her. So, let's talk about Michelle Williams just for a little bit. As we know, she is a beautiful young lady. She went more into the gospel thing. She was not really one of those, as you can see, as she performed with them, she wasn't as, um, limber and as movable as Beyonce and Kelly was um and that's okay everybody you know has their own little lane but she worked it worked for them for that time um as y'all know she did battle with depression um she she made it she talked about it where why this is not nothing new if you are if this is new to you google her she talked about her depression how she had to go into uh help get help for that she was taking medication she actually um just her the relationship with her fiance, she kind of called off because it was affecting her thinking that she can give him what he needs with her going through these battles with depression. So basically she's saying that it affected her and it was part of the reason why she is battling depression like she is now. Y'all got to remember, and, and I say this to myself, I say it to people around me, you just never know how you affecting someone and the situations that they're in is affecting them. Nobody wants to be the latter. Everybody wants to be the head. Everybody wants to be the Beyonce. Everybody wants to be the one in front of the camera. Um, and that's okay. If you were born where people were always telling you, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're this and that, it will boost your confidence. It'll give you what you need. But remember, everybody wasn't born that way. Um, we don't know what her childhood was Um facts we just know what is being told and basically she's saying that that was part of the reason or that was part of what affected her to spiral out a little more because they were an international girls group one of the biggest that we've ever seen and beyonce have went on to do amazing things she has a family she has one of the biggest uh rappers in the world who now a uh, philanthropist and you know all them great activists and he is a billionaire you know who wouldn't want to have that but again you don't know what she is going through in order to have that life so on the outside looking in people just 
think one thing so you don't even know what this girl is going through and the reason i'm speaking on it is we know someone that knows someone or we have a crew that hangs around us or we are around other people and we look they look like they're smiling they look like they're okay but you just never know what somebody is battling here it is years years after this group has broke up they have she is still coming out basically seeking attention and i'm not attention in a bad way but seeking attention about this thing that is disturbing her and i really wanted to bring it to you guys because if she is still talking about it, it she wants to help people she wants to let people know that don't be quiet about what you feel yeah you're going through it now but this is not something that you should be quite talk about it say the things that are affecting you say what brought you to that place because it may be able to heal you basically michelle williams our hats off to you because it takes a lot to put yourself out there even after you were the one that they said couldn't dance or you the one that said uh they said that you fell all the time or you were never you had any rhythm it takes a lot to still stand in front of the light in front of people and say that affected me that hurted me and that's one of the reasons why this is that i encourage anyone if there's anything in your life that is affecting you that's hurting you that's taking you down hmm, talk about it tell somebody about it hey comment under this uh video and you know vent if you want to we want to hear what you have to say we are the people station esp tv is here to encourage you to be exactly who you are and to vent out the things that you feel is disturbing you because we want to bring you the information that is helping you we don't just want to entertain you and be in front of your your screen we really want to know that what we're doing is helping and affecting people in different ways and that's why i try to choose different stories that i think you guys want to hear not always the things that's 100 percent trending but the things that are have underlying things that i can say hey check this out think about this you know um think Think about how this is good or bad or whatever the case may be. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed those stories. Those were some different. I didn't do a recap this week because I kind of wanted y'all to focus on these stories. I'll recap next week over the last couple of weeks what I've done and give y'all some updates on those stories. But I definitely want you guys to continue to follow ESPTV, all of our social media links from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Make sure y'all are following, like, comment, and share. Again, if you know anybody that these stories will affect, you'll be like, hey, check this out. Out. go ahead and send them over the link we definitely want to encourage you guys to share us with all the people that you know your network your business all them great things and if you have someone that's interested in doing anything make sure y'all hit up Ernest Smith Productions he is looking forward to talking to anyone who feel like they have a creative sense of mind that may be able to help and we may be getting volunteers to help us out around here so if you are in this type of business and you want to help out or you have some ideas definitely hit up Ernest. i think he will be willing to want to talk to everybody so again y'all make sure y'all follow we have a lot a lot a lot of different um shows coming y'all are going to be like so amazed on the different personalities and creatives that's going to be on esp tv we're trying to cover the bases all around so you guys are getting great entertainment some laugh some cries some horror some news some um entertainment fashion lifestyle like all of the great things and a lot of the personalities that's going to be up here is going to touch a little bit of everybody so you guys stay tuned for what we have coming next you definitely if it's a story you guys want me to cover y'all want me to do a little research and dig a little bit more about send that over to us like comment under the video definitely share 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 the more you share the more people we can touch the more people we can affect and the more people we can help and then the more people that we may be able to give a platform to that can help more people because we're about the people we are your people station so thank you guys for tuning in um to esp tv i am patricia streeter i am your girl uh always a lady and ready to bring you whatever it is so i'll see you guys next week tuesday 8 p.m right here same place same time